You deserve to be loved, and to love not only others, but also yourself. Perhaps it is something you have lacked in the past, and while we cannot rewrite the past, we can rewrite the future, and make daily commitments to be more loving and encouraging toward ourselves. And basically, harness the longest relationship we'll ever have, the one with ourselves. I highly recommend watching my previous video about self-love and confidence before delving into this one to build a solid foundation first. However, feel free to take whatever resonates with you and to return whenever you need a refresher or want to elevate your game. I believe that confidence stems from truly knowing oneself one's preferences, one's beliefs, and having an overall deep understanding of one's capabilities and desires. Otherwise, you will continuously try to be somebody you are not. Following trends, doing specific things, hoping they will fill a void that you have created in the first place. In order to gather all this information, it is essential to do some sort of shadow work or journaling. But I've got you. I've created a free document you can download with some shadow work prompts. They will get you started on your journey to self-love and confidence. And there are no excuses because it's free and you can literally start right now. The key is to be honest while answering these questions. Because ultimately, the only person reading this is yourself. Like, who are you trying to lie to right now? Also, don't be afraid to change your mind, change your beliefs, or even your dreams. I think one of the biggest mistakes one can make is to limit oneself. Because while there are things that we will forever love, there are also things we simply outgrow. On the contrary, there are also things that we did not know about that we will actually enjoy in the future. Therefore, doing this habit should not be a once-in-a-lifetime activity, <laughs> but a ritual followed every once in a while. You can make it a cute, enjoyable activity, putting on some candles and music and make it a whole damn event. Because look at you go, taking care of your future, performing the highest act of self-love one can practice. Isn't it funny how we are constantly searching for people who match our vibes, yet the person most aligned with us, who shares our passions, is our own reflection in the mirror. What a quote, right? Therefore, spend some time in solitude. Being alone does not mean being lonely. Quite the opposite. It's freedom. You have full control to interpret a situation unaffected by the opinions of others. You do not have to compromise on your wants and you can do whatever you want. You can take your time and take up space and truly do the things you want at your own pace. I know it can be difficult and quite uncomfortable to do things alone, especially when we are so used to waiting waiting for people to join us. But honestly, it's one of the most liberating practices you will ever embark on. Because eventually, you will reach that point where it doesn't matter that you are sitting at a restaurant alone or go on a solo trip throughout Europe. It makes you realize that the only person you will ever need is yourself and that you do not have to wait for other people to make things happen. Their presence becomes a gift, not a necessity. Most importantly, you realize that you can have fun on your own and that it is actually so enjoyable. Like, I love spending time alone, but I also love being around people and just, you know, meeting new people and hearing about their crazy stories. Obviously, you do not have to immediately go to a restaurant alone. It's more about scheduling intentional time to spend with yourself. That could mean committing to paint on a specific day or making time to cook a dish you've always wanted to cook. Start small and gradually increase, as I love to say. <laughs> when we celebrate other people, we often go all the way out when it comes to gifts. Showering them with compliments and making them feel loved. And I think that is beautiful. However, how is it about ourselves? Are we buying ourselves gifts 
Or is this rather an inconsistent and intentional thing? Are we speaking words of love to ourselves? Or is it more of a words of hatred? I could say now, how do you expect other people to treat you with such manners if you cannot even show up for yourself in this way? But honestly, it does not matter what people are thinking about you right now. The only opinion you should be concerned about is your own at this moment. I want you to commit to buying yourself a gift every week. Show yourself some appreciation for pushing forward, for showing up for yourself, and ultimately for trying to be better in a world where pain and suffering are constant companions for many. This can be anything you want and does not have to be huge. For instance, I get myself flowers every week. They are from the supermarket, so they are not very expensive. Just to remind myself that I am worthy of love, and that I believe in me and that I'm basically proud of myself for trying. This habit might seem superficial or even irrelevant on the surface, but it goes much deeper than one can sense. Ultimately, you are signifying to your subconscious mind that you are capable of anything and that despite challenges and failures, you will never stop loving and believing in yourself. And I think that is quite beautiful. Here are my tulpies. I love tulpies and lilies so much because they remind us that good things take time and everybody has their own individual time to shine. So like this flower, your self-love is blooming individually right now. I also bought myself a bouquet for Valentine's Day. They're so pretty. I love flowers so much. But in addition, at some point you realize that the only love you ever needed was your own. You don't need to wait for other people to buy you flowers or gifts. You buy them yourself because you realize you deserve them. Nevertheless, you are taking your power back and taking charge. I purposely do not speak about physical matters when it comes to confidence or self-love. Because I know from my own experience that those things are separate from our external appearance. The only way to foster true confidence is from within. However, I do believe in physical exercise and great nutrition. Not to reach a certain weight or ideal body type, but to nurture and take care of yourself. Your body is your greatest asset and it deserves love and care. If you do not care for it now, the price you'll pay later is illness. So when you are thinking about exercise, healthy meals, skincare and self-care, stop treating them like means to an end, but rather enjoyable activity in themselves. This means instead of working out to reach a specific dream body, you do it because your body deserves movement and attention. You do skincare as a way to appreciate yourselves and care for them. Rather than believing you'll have glass skin afterwards, you eat healthy, nutritional meals not to reach a specific weight but to give yourself the nutrients it needs to conquer the day when it comes to exercise i am a huge advocate for yoga and daily stretching personally i love yoga because it teaches you in a gentle way to be more intentional with your exercise and fosters a great relationship with your mind and body i always do the workouts from maddie morris the best thing about reframing your thoughts is that it makes you fall in love with the process, making it more enjoyable, and you will reach all these goals you initially had, but in a much healthier way. Amazing, right? These activities will slowly but surely build trust within yourself and serve as a foundation to foster self-love and confidence. Never forget to be kind to yourself and acknowledge that you are trying. I am proud of you and I believe in you and you should be too. And always remember, every single day holds the power to change your life.